comments uh, from our speakers. And Judy, I'd like to just begin with you, if I may. Any closing comments you'd like to make? Yeah, just uh, seriously appreciate you for holding this. And, and again, it's not incompetence. It, it, it's malfeasance on the part of Tony Fauci and has been for almost um, for more than 25 years. And, and so until we the people stop this, until we the people um, take back our power and our rights um, and, and, and stop the censorship, you know, everything upon which this country is founded, um, we, we simply will end up in tyranny. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, David, Martin, please, closing comments from you, David. Well, I appreciate the comments, Sasha, that you made about looking in the mirror. This is a time for us to recognize that if we are going to aspire to a humanity, we need to manifest it ourselves. And that means that we need to see that we are, in fact, responsible to inform ourselves, to engage with each other, to have informed and respectful dialogue to have the opportunity to examine information that has not heretofore been accessible, to celebrate experiences like the one we've just had where you get multiple perspectives coming from multiple angles. And when we model that humanity that is something worthy of aspiration, then we can actually start asking for that from others. And I think that it's absolutely vital in this time that we re recognize that we're given an opportunity right now to see how forces of darkness can conspire to harm humanity. And if we use this wisely, this will give us the opportunity to understand what in fact may come down the road where we can recognize by its fingerprints and by its footprints, those forces that seek to harm us again. This is an opportunity for us to learn. This is an opportunity, opportunity for us to, to form alliances to work together, to collaborate, and to ultimately build a force of light as coherent in our time as what darkness has built over the last few centuries. So I think we've got a great opportunity, and I think this particular meeting and the tone and the tenor of this meeting is exactly the model of the type of thing, to Robert's point, which is the presentment of our side of a case. and. I, among all of us, I think, are very happy to have the conversation where we listen to the, the, the presentments on, on the other side and, and have a genuine, honest, and thoughtful dialogue. Thank you, David, very much indeed. Rocco, uh, Galassi, your takeaway, please, from, from this panel and from, uh, from this meeting. Well, my takeaway, uh, springing from something that Robert said about freedom of speech, you know, as a constitutional lawyer, I, when I'm asked, what do you do? I simply, in a word, say to them, I protect human attributes and humanity. The, you know, the framers of the U.S. Constitution had it right when they talked about inalienable rights, meaning the rights that were given to you by your creator, even if you believe your creator is just your mother. And so they're suppressing our, free, our, our freedom to think. You're th if you can think but can't speak, your freedom of speech is useless. If you can speak but can't associate, your freedom of speech is useless. If you can't associate, uh, if you can associate, uh, associate but can't assemble, your freedom of association is useless. So they're one unbroken, although we break them down for analytical purposes, these rights, these constitutional rights that attach to the person are human attributes. And this whole COVID agenda has done in lockstep everything it can do or try to do to dehumanize us. And Robert was quite right with the implementation of devices into our, the experimental implementation of devices that's already out there through the World Economic Forum. It is a movement to, with the AI towards a Borg-like uh, transformation of humanity. And that is dehumanizing and we have to resist it. Thank you. Thank you, Rocco. Robert Kennedy, your closing comments, please. I mean, this is, uh, first of all, thank you for putting on this forum. Uh, Tony Fauci has played a key role in creating the architecture of, uh, of this totalitarian um, subversion of democracy. My uncle, President Kennedy, is hard to measure the, you know, the success of a presidency, but if you measure it based upon 
a president's popularity abroad. There is no president in the United States history um, who has a more convincing record. There's more boulevards and schools and you know capitals in every country in the world made for him than any other president. The reason for that is because he believed in democracy and he proclaimed it. And he believed in, um, he was cautious about the military and knew that the military industrial complex uh, which today includes a uh, medical cartel and the pharmaceutical cartel were the biggest threat to humanity and democracy. And he celebrated science. Um, and, you know, he created a, this effort to get to the moon, which was a way of elevating all of humanity by bringing humanity together through science. And what Tony Fauci's done over 50 years in all office is to not only um, dismantle and obliterate the American love for science and, and, all, and, and completely fail as a public health official. The chronic disease exploded under his regime, but also he is now the principal author of this dismantlement of American democracy. And, you know, it's not what he does has nothing to do with science. It's about religion. Science is not what Tony Fauci says. It's not what CDC says. It's not what your doctor tells you. It's what you find in peer-reviewed publications on PubMed. And even that, you need to question. And you need to look at critically. But, you know, he's been an instrument for obliterating critical thinking among Americans, and he's created an orthodoxy, which is, it's a religious belief. It's, it's, it is the belief in undeserving authority and the faith in undeserving authority rather than, and that is the, you know, the emblem, that is the, the genetic legacy of tribalism. Orthodoxy is just tribalism writ large and designed to divide us and to allow the ascendancy of very, very powerful people who will dominate and enslave us. And that's what we're watching right now. Thank you, Robert. I'm bringing Imani in. I want to thank